Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of January. India's foreign minister meets Maldivian counterpart to boost ties. Sindhi activists protest against Pakistan and China on GM Sayyid's birth anniversary. And Qatar says engagement with Taliban needed despite disappointing actions. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Wednesday arrived in Maldives for his visit to overlook the impact of the developmental assistance provided by India to the island nation. Jay Shankar was received by his Maldivian counterpart Abdullah Shahid and accorded a traditional welcome. Taking to Twitter, Shahid said the Maldives-India partnership has profound impact on strengthening of bilateral relations between both countries. After holding delegation-level talks, both sides signed three agreements in the field of community empowerment, sports infrastructure and higher education. Jay Shankar was also scheduled to call on Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli later in the day before proceeding to Sri Lanka. The last two sarup or copies of Sikhism's holiest book, Guru Granth Sahib, were brought to the Indian capital, New Delhi, on Wednesday from Afghanistan's Kabul. Three members of the Afghan Sikh community also arrived along in the CAM F flight organized by SGPC, the management body of Sikh shrines in India. The smooth passage was facilitated by the Taliban authorities and the Indian government as per proper religious protocols. Sikhs consider the religious text as a living entity. There were initially 13 sarup in Afghanistan, of which 10 had earlier been shifted to India. India is now home to around 20,000 Afghan Sikhs, with most of them migrating to the country after the Taliban seized power in 2021. In news from Pakistan, Governor of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Ghulam Ali, on Wednesday approved the advisory forwarded by Chief Minister Mahmood Khan and dissolved the Provincial Assembly. The development comes days after PTI coalition partner Parvez Elahi had dissolved the Provincial Assembly of Punjab. In a major boost to former Premier and PTI Chairman Imran Khan's demand for snap polls, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Assembly was dissolved on Wednesday. In a notification signed early morning, Governor Haji Ghulam Ali approved Chief Minister Mahmood Khan's summary for the dissolution of the provincial legislature and asked the outgoing leader of Treasury and the opposition to suggest name for a caretaker Chief Minister. The move comes days after ally of Imran Khan's PTI party in Punjab, Parvez Ilahi dissolved the Punjab Provincial Assembly. Unlike his Pakhtunkhwa counterpart, Punjab Governor Baligur Rehman had refused to sign the order of summary sent by Ilahi. With the assemblies being dissolved, both provinces have proceeded to appoint a caretaker CM until the next government is elected. Under Pakistan's law, Election Commission of Pakistan is bound to conduct fresh elections in both the provinces in the next 90 days. While Imran Khan's demand for snap polls has gained momentum with the dissolution, PMLN leaders have maintained federal coalition would not be blackmailed by the PTI chief's demand. Amid a crippling economy and high rate of inflation, Pakistan continues to face an acute food shortage. Residents in Balochistan's Quetta city were seen standing in long queues recently to get subsidized wheat provided by the government. The alleged black marketing and smuggling of essential food items is being done by few traders for their benefit. Pakistan continues to witness severe food crisis as it faces a crippling economy and high rate of inflation. People in Balochistan's Quetta were seen queuing up for several hours to get wheat flour provided by the provincial government. While few managed to grab a bag, many were left empty-handed. 
Locals alleged the shortage is mainly due to hoarding and black marketing by few traders. They believe smuggling of essential food items to neighboring Afghanistan is also happening due to which poor people cannot get subsidized items. However, we traders say the supply has been stopped for the last 10 to 15 days from the government side. If supply doesn't resume, the price will increase as well, a trader said. दूसरी बात अगर ये की जाए कि जो आटे की किल्लत एक मुस्लिमी तरीके जो मैंने बताया है क्योंकि यहाँ से काफी आटा समग्र हो रहा है अफगानिस्तान की तरफ जब समग्र होते हैं तो हमारे यहाँ पर जो सब्सिडी दी जाती है आवाम को और जो हमारे स्टॉक होता है उसमें जाहिर सी बात है किल्लत पाई जाती है इसलिए हमें गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट से जो है पहले ये करना चाहिए कि वो आटे की जो है सबसे पहले जो है समगलिंग का रोक काम के जरिए जो इसको रोक ले उसके बाद जो आवाम को शायद जरूर मिल जाएगा मीन वाइल एस फूड प्राइजेस स्पाइक इन पाकिस्तान द वर्ल्ड बैंक इन इट्स रीसेंट रिपोर्ट हैज टर्म द साउथ एशियन नेशन एज द वीकेस्ट इकोनॉमी इन द रीजन The lender states Pakistan economic output was not only declining itself but also bringing down the regional growth rate as well. The report citing the colossal flood of 2022 for precarious economic situation predicts the reconstruction and recovery needs of country will be 1.6 times the national budget for fiscal year 2022-23. Reportedly the country's forex reserves have hit a new low of 4.6 billion US dollars only enough for 3 weeks import cover. Moving on, a massive rally was held by political activists in Sindh, marking the 119th birth anniversary of late Sindhi nationalist leader G M Sayed. The demonstrators raised slogans against Pakistan and China over exploitation of their natural resources and called for freedom of Sindh from illegal occupation. Defying all restrictions, a massive demonstration rally was organized by Sindhi political activists and people of Sindh to mark the 119th birth anniversary of late Sindhi nationalist leader G M Sayed in Sand town of Pakistan's Sindh province on Tuesday. The activists of the G S N Freedom Movement carried banners reading "No China, Go China" against CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, attempts to change demography of the region. and enforced disappearances and forcible religious conversion of minority sindhi hindu girls the activists called on pakistan and china to stop exploiting their natural resources and end sindh's illegal occupation as they raised pro freedom slogans there were also reports of violent crackdown by pakistani security forces on the demonstrators there are several nationalist parties in sindh who advocate for a free sindh nation calling Pakistan an occupier they accuse Islamabad of atrocities against innocent sindhis for raising their voices Qatar's foreign minister during the Davos 2023 meeting on Tuesday said that the recent measures taken by Afghanistan's Taliban led administration were very disappointing but Doha would continue engaging as it was the only way forward to achieve change on the ground He said that Doha is also consulting with other Muslim countries to establish a dialogue with the Taliban officials. Qatar's foreign minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani said on Tuesday that recent measures taken by Afghanistan's Taliban-led administration were very disappointing but Doha would continue engaging as it is the only way forward to achieve change on the ground. The Taliban has imposed bans on women working for aid groups or attending universities and high school over the past one and a half years of their rule. Besides that, they have imposed many restrictions on women's presence in society. Addressing the Davos 2023 meeting, Al Thani said Doha is also consulting with other Muslim countries to establish a dialogue with Taliban officials. He further added that it would not be an easy task, but it is important to keep trying. Happened recently, and the recent measures by uh, the Taliban government in Afghanistan has been very disappointing for us, and we've been warning them from taking such a decisions that are going to just to make the situation much worse for the Afghan people, but also for the international community to be able to deal with them. Uh, does it mean that we are going to stop our efforts no we should continue we always remain hopeful that uh, uh, the way we are engaging with others we are engaging with people who are sometimes difficult to talk to 
it's the only way forward to find a resolution. The recent Taliban decision to ban female aid workers triggered global reactions and led to the suspension of the activities of many major aid organizations in the country amidst poverty and an unprecedented cold winter that has left dozens of people dead across Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Tuesday informed the parliament that talks with India and China on debt restructuring are successful. The crisis-hit country requires the backing of China and India, its biggest bilateral lenders, to reach a final agreement with the IMF on a $2.9 billion loan. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikrame Singhe on Tuesday informed the parliament that the talks with India and China on debt restructuring have been successful. We are continuing discussions in that regard and I am pleased to announce to the House that the discussions are currently successful, Vikrame Singhe told lawmakers a press release by the President's media division read. He also called on the opposition to join hands with the government through a new political system to provide relief to the people. He assured that measures will be taken to allocate 30 to 40 billion Lankan rupees. Sri Lanka requires the backing of China and India, its biggest bilateral lenders, to reach a final agreement with the IMF on the $2.9 billion loan that is essential to put its battered economy back on track. The two Asian giants which have jostled for influence over Sri Lanka for decades account for about 5 billion US dollars each in bilateral trade in 2021. Earlier, Sri Lanka's cabinet said on Tuesday that it would cut its recurrent budget expenditure by 6% in 2023 and had approved a proposal to delay salaries of some public employees to manage public finances. People from across the globe have gathered in India's northern Varanasi city to take part in a four-day boat race and hot air balloon festival aimed at promoting tourism in Varanasi. The event has been organized to mark the first visit of the delegation of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. India's northern Varanasi city is hosting four-day Kashi Balloon and Boat Festival, which is drawing enthusiasts from across the globe since it began on Tuesday. Aimed at promoting tourism in Varanasi, the boat race competition saw boat rowers and traditional boatmen compete in 12 teams. The sporting event has a new rulebook and is based on the point system, where teams will compete every day to collect points and the team that amasses the cumulative top score will be accorded the title and the championship. The champions will get collective prize money of $2,460. इनको एक सस्टेनेबल तरीके से प्रमोट किया जाए और एक कमाई का जरिया भी बनाया जाए और एक टूरिज्म का जरिया भी बनाया जाए ताकि हम ये पूरे विश्व को दिखा सके बनारस क्या क्या ऑफर कर सकता है बियॉन्ड जस्ट रिलीजियस टूरिज्म मीनवाइल अ सीरीज ऑफ टेन बेलून्स विद टॉप बेलूनिस फ्रॉम सिक्स कंट्रीज टूक फ्लाइट ओवर वाराणसी रिवर बैंक ऑन ट्यूजडे इवनिंग वेयर दी पीपल कैन सी दी लाइफ एंडिंग क्लाइमेक्टिक रिचुअल्स लैंड लॉक टेम्पल स्केप and the dramatic throng of pilgrims taking their redemptive dips in the holy Ganga river. So we're here for the, uh, what's it called again, the Kashi International Balloon and Boat Festival here in Varanasi, India. And we're here to fly our hot air balloons over the city of Varanasi. And also at night we put on a static display with the balloons where uh, we inflate them at night and they glow from the glow of the burners, basically. Varanasi, an ancient city on the river Ganga, is dotted with thousands of temples and is popular among tourists for its religious places. The event has been organized to mark the first visit of a delegation of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline. And follow us on Twitter at SAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.